So guys, today we are back on the 2015 Outback project car. We've got once again, a big old box of parts to install. In a previous video, we talked about the issue I had where I thought I had a little bit of an issue in the transmission, but turns out it was some misfiring, some very sporadic little misfires, enough to not even throw a check engine light for misfires, went through the roughness monitor, found just a couple here and there, the car would hiccup, so not knowing the last services on the vehicle, not knowing anything about the previous maintenance, we're going to go ahead and replace spark plugs and we're going to go ahead and replace our spark plug tube seals and our cam cover gaskets because as we found in the first video inspecting the car, our cam cover gaskets were leaking externally and if they're leaking externally, most likely the spark plug tube seals are leaking oil into the tube where the spark plug sits and could be causing some misfiring issues with the oil interacting with the ignition coil. So we're gonna go through, clean all that mess out, put some new spark plugs in, reseal our cam covers and spark plug tubes, and hopefully alleviate our misfire issue. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into this box of parts and get to installing it. So guys, before we get tearing into the box of new parts and getting them on the Outback, big thank you to SubaruPartsDeals.com. SubaruPartsDeals.com sent out the cam cover gaskets, the spark plug tube seals, and brand new spark plugs for today's repair. Check out SubaruPartsDeals.com, your online retailer for genuine Subaru parts. Easy to navigate website. You can search by model, year, and trim, or you can simply type in your VIN number to easily find the parts you need for your Subaru. Or you can shoot them a call or an email and their staff will be glad to help you figure out what parts you need for your DIY Subaru repair projects. As a big thanks to you viewers, SubaruPartsDeals.com has offered up a promo code MRSUBARU in all caps, good for 15% off shipping of your order. SubaruPartsDeals.com, a Subaru genuine certified seller of parts for your Subaru vehicle. Anytime you get ready to do any repair on your Subaru, check them out, price them out, they got some of the best prices out there on Subaru Genuine Parts. So guys, a quick look at our parts for today. We've got our cam cover gasket for the left-hand side, 13272AA24A. We've got our cam cover gasket for our right-hand side, 13270AA29A. We've got four Subaru Genuine NGK spark plugs, 22401AA781. And we've got four spark plug tube seals, part number 10966AA042. Also in doing this repair, we're gonna need a little bit of Permatex Ultra Gray or three bond RTV sealant. So guys, as most of us know, Subarus are notoriously tight when it comes to getting to spark plugs and cam cover gaskets because uh, we're basically jammed up against the frame rails on either side. So to help alleviate the strain and stress of the repair and give ourselves ample working room. Our first step here will be to get some stuff out of the engine bay, out of our, out of our way. So uh, we're gonna take off our air intake snorkel, we're gonna take off the air box, both pieces, intake track should give us all the room we need on the passenger side. On the driver's side, we should be able to just take out the battery and the battery tray and give us the room we need on that side. So we'll go through, take the mass air, big tail off, Take our worm gear clamp loose at the throttle body, pop our clips on the air box. We'll go around, pop up our little plastic push pin between the silencer and the intake manifold. We'll reach down off frame, squeeze the clamp, pull the PCV hose off of that silencer box, wiggle it off the throttle body and pull as an assembly it out of the engine bay. Set it aside. I'm gonna need to grab a 10 millimeter or 12 millimeter socket, take out two bolts down here, lower air box, get that out of the way. Again, we'll have ample room here on the passenger side of the engine compartment. We might need to 
Remove the fuel rail shields here as well to get that cam cover up and out. Then, as I said, I'm going to take our battery loose on the driver's side. Always want to break the negative terminal loose first. And follow that up with our positive. I'm going to be doing a lot of house cleaning as we go through this because there is just so much spilled oil and junk everywhere. It's going to try to defilth this engine bay as we go. We will be taking the intake off later and addressing those leaking coolant crossover pipe O-rings and stuff and cleaning up the top side of the engine in a later video, but we're going to try to clean the front and sides and the cam covers and all that spilled oil as we do this repair. So correction on the battery tray, there's actually three 14 millimeter headed bolts at the base where the battery sits. There are two between the engine and the frame rail going in this way. And there's one at the very back. Once those are all out, you can go ahead and lift it up and out of the way. I was not kidding about this engine being super greasy, oily, and disgusting. It is literally everywhere. So now we've got access to our two ignition coils on the driver's side. We're going to move a little bit of this wiring and stuff back out of the way, hopefully to give a better line of sight to you viewers. All right, guys, so a considerable amount of crud on the frame rail and the uh, front timing cover here cleaned up so we can get in here and work more cleanly. Now I've pulled the washer reservoir off. You don't need to do that. I just did that so it didn't splash back while I was trying to clean the uh, front cover. I did remove the belt guard here, one 10 millimeter bolt here, a little plastic nubbin here, pop that up. And I pulled the serpentine belt off, 15 millimeter wrench here, turn it, take the tension off, pull the belt off, release the tension. Because we need to turn our crank pulley and align this notch here with the zero mark. And that is because it's so close on this side, you have to line that up for the cam lobes to be in a position where they won't catch on the cam cover coming out. So now that we got that done, we can go ahead and knock off our fuel rail cover, take our ignition coils loose. We're gonna spray some brake parts cleaner up in the tube holes and blow it out with a blow nozzle because I'm sure there's some oil in there. We're gonna blow it out before we take our spark plugs out so it doesn't get down in the combustion chambers. So guys, apologies in advance because it is gonna be very difficult to show you what I'm working on without being in the way of it. And uh, if I need to put some visuals on screen, I'll try to do that to help. But uh, first off, what I did also is I pulled the wiring harness to the AC compressor and the alternator, just took those loose and fished it back through. So that's not going across here, just to give us a little bit more room and to hopefully let you guys see a little bit better in here what we're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab I believe a 10 millimeter socket and knock these two bolts off that hold this fuel rail cover on. Then we'll take two tens out for the ignition coils and take the pigtails loose, pop them out. that back out of the way. Again, trying to give ourselves as much room as possible. So 
So for our pigtail, we got this little wire, push the wire in towards the cylinder head and then push the pigtail back off of the ignition coil. And yep, we got some oil in here and our spark plug tubes on our ignition coils. So that was a fear of a source of the misfire issue. Yep, we definitely got some oil leaking in there. Really wondering what kind of condition these spark plugs are in, how old they might be, how much wear and tear is on them. And these coils are never easy to get to come loose. So just like that, you want to push the wire in and kind of back as you pull on the pigtail, take it loose. Definitely got oil on this ignition coil. Should be able to clean it up, put some dielectric on it and be good to go. And our second coil covered in oil as well. All right guys, so what we're gonna do now is spray off all of this mess up here. We're gonna spray brake parts cleaner in the tubes, take a blow nozzle, blow all of this out. Then we're gonna go ahead and take out our 10 millimeter headed bolts that hold the cam cover in place, pull that out. Then we'll change the spark plugs because they'll be easier to get at. We'll have a little bit more room with this cam cover out of the way. So put the blow nozzle in and a ton of oil came out, especially that back cylinder there. So uh, we got that all flushed out. We're gonna try to flush out some more of this junk on the top and uh, then get the knocking off the cover. All right guys, so all the fasteners are out. Should be three 10 millimeter headed bolts across the top, two in the center, one on each end, three at the bottom. And we should be able to just peel back and break that seal of that RTV and uh, work this cover out of here. Good idea to have a catch pan underneath because you will lose a little bit of engine oil when you take this cover off. That's why we cleaned up here and uh, took the blow nozzle and blew everything off, trying to minimize the amount of junk falling in. This RTV is not wanting to let go on the back side. And there we go. And got her out. So now that we got the cam cover out of the way, the hard part is cleaning up all the RTV silicone on these outer edges over the humps for the camshafts. Take your time, do not gouge a cam lobe. It is a painful, tedious process, but you will get it cleaned up. From there, we're just gonna reach in and we pop out the old spark plug tube seals. They're really hard, really brittle. So that'll pop off pretty easy. Now that they're out of the way and the cam cover's out of the way, we can get in here and get our spark plugs a whole lot easier. We got more room to get them. So we're gonna go ahead and pull our spark plugs out now. See how bad of a condition they're in. Again, super careful during the whole thing because we don't wanna knock any junk into the engine. So yeah, that spark plug has seen better days. That is for sure. You can really tell where all that oil was sitting around the base of it. So uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and pull the other one out and put our brand new ones in. And the rear plug is out. Looking just as bad. All right guys, so now that we've got the painstaking part of this, getting all the RTV off of the cam carrier, we're gonna go ahead and install our new spark plugs. Then we'll install our spark plug tube seals. And then we'll break out our brand new uh, cam cover gasket put it in the grooves, put some RTV in the corners and slap it on there, get ready to put all this back together, get over on the 
other side of the engine, which is a little bit easier than this side of the engine. So got that plug in there. We're gonna torque her down to 18 Newton meters. Go ahead and put our other plug in and again torque it to 18 newton meters all right guys now we can take our spark plug tube seals and pop them on got those on there all the way cleaned up our cam cover now we've got our new gasket in place i'm going to put our rtv in our corners where it says to from the factory service manual. We'll take some brake parts, clean on a rag, do one final sweep of the perimeter for the mating surface and slap the new cover on there. Tighten all our bolts down, torque them to 6.4 Newton meters. All right, RTV on where it needs to be. We're all cleaned up. Got our cover in very carefully. Don't wanna get any RTV on any camshaft lobes. And stuck in place. Go ahead and run our fasteners in. So our tightening sequence is the uh, two middle ones first, and then we'll go top, bottom, and then crisscross. And we are all set. Cam cover back on, torque properly. Now we can go ahead and put our ignition coils back in, hook the pigtails back up, and uh, put the fuel rail cover back into place. Get ready to pull our passenger side apart. Drop our rear coil in. Tighten down our coil bolt. Hook our pigtail back up. A lot easier to hook those back up than to take them apart, that's for sure. Grab our front coil. Plop that in, coil bolt in. Go ahead and hook our pigtail up. We'll 
swing that few rail protector plate back into place. Slide that back in and throw our two bolts in. And just snug them up. And now we'll jump over to our passenger side. We'll come back and put our battery and all that in this side. On to the passenger side. We'll go ahead and knock off the fuel rail cover again. Set that off to the side. I'm gonna try to clean up the area before we disassemble. Now that things are a little bit more clean under here, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the electrical connectors on our coils and unbolt and remove the coil. And guys, it can be a little bit easier to disconnect them while the coil is still bolted in rather than uh, once you have it unbolted. Again, you just push that spring in and then push the connector back. Pretty simple but can be a little bit of a pain and hang up on you. First coil out. behold lots of oil no surprise there not the big tail off and dripping oil get those cleaned up before we reassemble grab our coil connectors and tuck them back to the back blow this all out again and uh, go ahead and get that cam cover knocked off. All right, everything's pretty much cleaned up. And I'm gonna show you how much oil is gonna come out of this. Tons of oil in those spark plug tubes. Surprised I wasn't just straight misfiring the whole time. Blow all that out. All right, got our spark plug tubes blown out. Go ahead and get this cam cover off. Got all our bolts out. And got our cover out. Now comes the oh glorious part again of clearing up all the RTV silicone over the rear cam humps and over the front here. Whoever was in here last time used way, and I mean way too much. Look at the amount of that squish out almost touching the camshaft. Not good. All right guys, so all of the cleanup is done. Now to pop our old spark plug tube seals out. Just like so. Now we can go ahead and replace the spark plugs. And one out. Just as disgusting. And two out. New plugs going in.
All right, new spark plugs are in, torque the specification. Got our new seals, tube seals on. Now we're just gonna go around and give one more wipe down around the ceiling perimeter with brake parts cleaner. And we'll shove our new least sealed up new cover gasket back up there. Now quickly, carefully drop our cover in. And again, we torque to 6.4 Newton meters. All right, guys, now we're gonna throw our ignition coils back in. Now we can get the fuel rail protector back into place. All right guys, so we're gonna drop our air box back into place. Make sure we don't get our mass air sensor wiring. Bring our air intake and air box assembly back in. Plug our mass air sensor back up. Run the air box up, snap it closed. Lock back on the throttle body, push pin back into place. Hook our PVs, PCV hose back up to the silencer box and we'll tighten up our worm gear clamp here at the throttle body we shall throw our serpentine belt back on bring our wiring harness back over that we uh, pulled out of the way Hook our AC compressor back up. Alternator. Now we'll pop our belt guard back into place.
reinstall the battery box. And battery is reattached. And guys, there you go. All done, all finished with this repair. Lots of cleanup under the hood, on the sides. Gonna be doing a lot more cleanup on top of the engine in future videos, but much, much better than where we started. Fresh spark plugs, fresh gaskets, a lot healthier engine, a lot happier outback. Big thanks once again to SubaruPartsDeals.com for sending me out the seals, gaskets, and spark plugs for this video. With that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you all in the next one.